There we go, the music is down and out. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, with an ace match from the lower bracket finals of the Divindade Supremas, or the Supreme Deities Tournament out of Brazil. The top four teams from this tournament moving on to the Brazilian lands, as this game was actually not paused. Darn it, we're gonna... No one saw anything rewinding. We'll let this roll from the beginning, beginning as players load in once again. Will this let me move things again? No, I, I touched on this a little bit last time, guys. You notice the right side of the screen, Agni and Sylvanas are not switching. It worked last time, not this time around, which is unfortunate. Nevertheless, top four teams from this match, from this tournament, excuse me, will move on to the Brazilian Arena of the Gods tournament in the beginning of December at the Sao Paulo Comic Con. They'll be fighting over one slot in the... Smite World Championships looking to take home prizes of over one million dollars. I'm not entirely sure the map's like 1.3, 1.4 million at this point. The winner of the LAN, or this, is this one of the LAN? One of the two is also fighting over 50,000 Brazilian real, which is roughly 15,000 US dollars. So there's some decent money on the line as well. I think this particular tournament is something like 30,000 gems per player. So essentially, if they win this tournament, they will have all the skins they ever want forever. Not quite that much, but they have a lot of skins and voice packs and all that fun stuff. I... 8,000 gems. I think that would actually be enough to buy every single Odyssey chest. Not entirely sure of the math on that one. But nevertheless, as we get into the game here, teams are roaming down the middle. We totally didn't actually see the game slightly started about 30 seconds in. Jump party! Yeah! As we get me off the thing, because no one needs to see me making weird motions and all that stuff and faces during the game while I'm casting. No one needs to see any of that. That said, guys, looking at us, Sylvanas looking to join us in as well. See, little jump party coming out, a little clapping coming from Cyphos as well. Will someone break the truce? That will be the question. Looks like another stalker just going to pop around the side. Let's take a look at these teams, guys. This time around, Phalanx team on the left side of your spectator eye, wearing those blue trunks, defending the Titan of Order. We have Envy Terra on Apollo this time around. Zaunk as the jungle nemesis, Marcel's as the mid lane. Isis, Yurling as the support Gab, and Cyphos over in the soul lane as Yanis. For Eternal Rally, we have Suzuki on support, Sylvanas this time around, Schultzen as the mid lane Agni once again, Yure in the jungle as Tyr, Arkanjo as the 80 carry Hunter, Rom, and finally Stalker in the mid lane as Jean Kui. No, so, sorry, solo lane as Jean Kui. Yeah, there we go, little mistakes. We only have a couple dozen so far, and we're only in game, second game of the night. This could get interesting. Looking at the bands, Vulcan was banned out by Phalanx team. Starker last time apparently did. Oh, we forgot to look at the Vulcan numbers. I'm going to say yes, he did in fact do the top damage because I called it like at the beginning of that cast. So Vulcan did the most damage last time. Right? Scylla as well. She was a monster. Eh, eh, yeah, sorry. We're going to try and avoid the puns today, guys. Odin banned out as well by Phalanx team. Ring of Spears doing potentially lots of damage. On the side of Eternal Rally, Loki, Nuwa, and Sirket band out. No focus bands. I believe those were actually the same bands they picked the last time around. Just don't want to deal with those relatively powerful assassins in Loki and Sirket. And then Nuwa with the Vision Grand from Fire Shards. The burst damage coming out of her Sol Clay Soldier Shining Metal combo is potentially devastating in the middle of a fight or even a 1v1 situation. So all said and done, looks like starter item-wise, nothing unusual coming out. Nope the camera jump over here sometimes the spectator client does not cooperate i'm like trying to move the camera around in the left lane to get out from behind these towers and then it jumps me to the right lane i don't even know anymore you're right, looking to follow zonk around the jungle perhaps or just loop around behind cyphers he could find a fearless right here he will he's gonna be forced back into the minion wave here it could be first blood one more cleave from overhead from Yuri. Gonna get first blood onto Cyphers. We might have a bit of a slower game. I think first blood last game was something like seven, eight minutes in. Something crazy like that. One minute 48 this time. Camera, why are you doing this to me? Stop jumping around. Definitely Yuri taking a little bit of poke. Looks like for the time being between Sylvanas and Rom. They have a lot of good pressure and wave clear. That wave has been pushed to the Phalanx team tower pretty much the entire game so far from what we've been seeing. Isis Road taking over. They could look for a gang potentially. She's hiding over that wall. There's no blink or anything like that online just yet. But as soon as that wave is pushed to the tower, she could look to rotate over and look for a gank. Otherwise, she's wasting a lot of time, losing a lot of gold experience herself. And she's heading back to... Oh, no, no. I believe there was a full wave of minions pushed to the tower in mid lane. Taking a look at Ice, uh, Agni's level, he's about to hit 6 as we have a pause coming out. Unfortunately, it looks like Marcel's was having a bit of connection issues on Sunday when this game was played. Once again, we'll kick this up to a bit of an increased speed. Talk about what these teams, take a look at these little lane matchups perhaps.
The Agni Isis matchup in mid lane. Isis is a bit more of a utility mage. Yes, if she hits a good spirit ball, there's a lot of burst coming out potentially. The problem is, once it's down, she has the wing gust. If she gets stunned out of her wing gust, that's kind of it. She's done. She has to wait on her cooldowns to really be effective in the fight. Yes, she has circle protection, which is great. It's beautifully potential. If it's placed well, if the fight goes well, if nothing else, you can usually get a heal out of it. But the 15% damage reduction flat across the board is nice as well. But it can be tricky. If you place in the team fight, kind of shifts out of it, well, you don't get much use out of it. For the matchup with Agni, Agni has a lot of poke potential early. If he can avoid getting hit by the spirit balls, Isis can use the wing gust to get a little bit of harass in, but... Agni's going to have kind of free run of that lane early. Once he, Especially now he has level 5, he has rain fire, he can look to have some good combos. Isis is reasonably immobile. If she has a rain fire coming down right on top of her, she can look to silence out the stun combo potentially, but it's a little bit of a tricky play going forward. Over in that right lane, looking at the Yanis versus Jean Kui matchup, Jean Kui has a tiny trinket online. I'll be curious to see what he looks to rush. The other day on Saturday we saw... Um, I can't remember what player it was, but we actually saw someone on Jean Queen not building any health whatsoever. They just went for lifesteal, went for a lot of extra damage. They had a Geb on their team at the time, so Geb was throwing the stone shield on him, getting him the extra health and all that fun stuff, crowd control immunity, and all that other stone shield related stuff, and just relying on the lifesteal and sheer damage. It worked okay. There was a couple of times when he got picked off, there was no nemesis in the game, so there was no sh uh, shredding his protections off of uh, Arvaya Divine Judgment. It worked out reasonably well. That said, there is a Nemesis. Zaunk is playing in this game. Nemesis is kind of considered a bit of a hard counter to Jean Kui. Nemesis just waits until Jean Kui pops his recall demons, doubles the protections from his demon bag passive. Nemesis hits him with that divine judgment, steals his uh, percentage of his health, of his protections rather, applies them to himself, and Nemesis then becomes tanky. Jean Kui a whole lot less tanky and easier to kill, and it kind of ends. Or at least, uh, not actually all the time, but it, it's less than ideal for Jean Kui when it happens. So we'll see how this matchup ends up playing out as the team fights go on. As the actual lane matchup, Jean Kui has, has healing. Nem uh, Vul Vulcan. Yanis does not, but about level 6, level 7, Yanis can clear the wave potentially in one unstable vortex. Might, if you miss one or two, the portal can clear it out well. So he has good wave clear. Jean Kui, on the other hand, has to kind of get close to apply. It's a bit of an arc cone kind of thing in front of him. He has to get to the side of the wave to clear them out. It's a little bit of an awkward ability to use effectively, especially when the likes of Yanis knows you want to do that and can look to harass you in the process. Blink Fearless coming in from Yore right now. Does find it, but will he get Astral Barrage coming down now as well? Looking for some good damage. Does find it. Looking for second blood right now onto Yurling. Divine Judgment coming in from Zaunk. Not going to be enough. Shulton will pick that kill up. Spirit Ball going to miss. Wisps coming out. Wisps coming out now from Suzuki. Gonna be healing those guys up a little bit. Looks like left side harpies will be going to Eternal Rally. They earned that one in the back of that pick. Right side harpies, I believe, were also picked up there. I think uh, Stalker might have kind of poked over there and picked those up in the way. Didn't actually see it, but it looks like right now Eternal Rally looking to pick up a Gold Fury. Uh, they are aware of it. We see Apollo coming around from the side. A little too late to steal that away, so beautiful. Just gonna do a little bit of damage, but otherwise, right now, Eternal Rally, two kills up, a couple mid harpies up, as well as the Gold Fury up. Recall Demons is out in the mid lane. Stalker in a 1v3 it's through space and time with the help of the Archer Minions. Gonna find the kill for Cyphers. Bit off a little more than he chewed, but all said and done, Phalanx team was getting a little bit low right there. Scary, all said and done. But, uh,. Taking a look at what some of these guys are picking up on what is, for the most part, their first backs of the game. We have Shoes and a Magi coming online for Jean Kui. No extra health yet, but a little bit of extra mana going to help him out in lane if he doesn't get that um, the mana buff. I don't see why he wouldn't quite yet. The Phalanx team could potentially look to steal it away. Soul Reaver. Not Soul Reaver. Soul Trap, excuse me, online for Isis. I had the cheat and looked at the tooltip. I know it wasn't Soul Re like Reliquary, but it's like Soul Reaver. No, that's not it. I cheated. Deal with it. Gonna possibly be looking for the Book of Thoth, not gonna be getting off it. Oh, Spirit Ball, a little too short, not gonna find the kill onto those minions. Yeah, unfortunately, we caught that on stream. You don't want to see those little things come out and happen. Especially not at these levels of play. This is reasonably high-end play, guys. These are potential World Championship contenders. They would, One of these teams we're gonna be seeing today, or perhaps one of the teams we did not see today, who was actually top four from this tournament, will make it on to Worlds where they will be facing off against the likes of, I should know this, 
SK Gaming and Aquila from Europe. We don't know the North American contenders or the Chinese contenders or the South American t contenders yet for that matter either. So it is still, for the most part, up in the air. But these, one of these teams could potentially be at, in the World Championships in Atlanta in January. So these are the teams to watch. We'll see how they do overall tonight. Haven't really commented overall on what my impressions are. We'll be coming out a little at the end of the stream. But for now, it looks like we've gotten back a little bit towards that first game, kind of slow laning. Oh, you know, I said it. And immediately, there's aggression coming out again. It's like, hey, we slowed down. No, you're right, going to eat a divine judgment over the left lane. Swift uh, slicing that's connecting as well. Spirit Ball going to find him. It could look for a kill here. Lawbringer is already offline. He can't leap out using that. But Cataclysm from Geb going to miss Path of Flames, saving Schultz in that stun. Zao going to Zao Kazook. Zao going to use the Swift Judgment to get out of that one. Attack speed buff though, Kanjo and Suzuki looking to steal this one away. Geb is aware of it. He does not have Rage of the Gods online right now. Shockwave going to be a little too early. Hand of the Gods from Suzuki going to find that one though. This is Yuling now in trouble across the skies. Coming down from Apollo. They're looking to engage on this through space and time coming. This could be a full 5 on 5 team fight here in a moment, ladies and gentlemen. MB Terra in the back is low as well. Zao, Astral Barrage is up. He's going to find the kill. Stalker getting a kill into Cyphers as well. But Marcel's is low. And actually, wow, that's fourth kill. Triple kill going the way of Stalker. Unfortunately for them, there is no gold fear on the map. That would have been the perfect opportunity to get that. But they have already secured that one. So this game, time around, Eternal Rally not holding back at all. They're looking for a lot of early game aggression relative to that last game. And, and like I touched on a little bit in the first game, if I say something, the exact opposite will immediately happen. As I saw that, well, it looks like things are slowing down once again. And no, we have a team fight coming out. Four kills going the way of Returnal Rally overall. Looking to take this mid lane tower. Mid lane. Words, mid lane tower. They will find that one. Quite a bit of golden hell. Wow, a lot of golden hands. Suzuki sitting on 2,800 almost. That is going to certainly. Where is he? That is, uh, he might actually skip Midas Boots and go straight for Sovereignty, perhaps. Midas Boots, though, still good to get on Shultzen and Suzuki eating a Spirit Ball, though. Had the Flames from Shultzen, get him out of that zone safely. Gonna use a Rain Fire quick to clear most of that wave out. Here's what Suzuki is gonna build. He's gonna head back to base with, actually, he's still roaming around. There's the recall. He's gonna have about 29, 53,000 or so gold. A lot of gold on Jean Cui as well as Rom as well. So whenever they make their way back to base, they're gonna have some nice, shiny new items. Looks like Midas Boots will get picked up. He's still sitting on a decent amount, I believe. No, maybe not quite. That's what's unfortunate about support. It's like anyone else, you go back to base with that much items. Like, well, I could look to potentially pick up some big, huge items, skip boots for now. But it's like, support, no, you're the support. You need the Midas Boots online. You better buy that, or else. It's that mysterious force who enforces these things. Force who enforces. Yeah, we'll go with that. So overall, some pretty big pickup. Looking at the golden experience graph, 5,000 gold lead the way of Eternal Rally, as well as 7,100 experience. Unfortunately, they're not evened up, but it's about a two to three level advantage. Two to three level advantage, roll to roll right now. It could be fairly significant in these next upcoming, what would more likely not be upcoming team fights. Poor Suzuki, just those minus bits online, really isn't able to deal with the wave clear coming off of Apollo. He's just gonna have to sit there, wait for Rom to come back to lane. He can't even get a couple minions because you're the support. Looks like uh, the exposed evil onto Scythe is doing a decent amount of damage. He is low. Sticking around right here could be risky potentially. Stalker could look to go aggressive. Recall demons is online. All he has to do is get reasonably close. Scythe is gonna go ahead and recall right now. Stalker will force that delay as the wave does hit the tower. Not going to look for aggression, not enough ward coverage right now, I will give credit where credit's due. It's always nice and fun to look for blood whenever the opportunity presents itself, but sometimes you just got to take a step back, say no, this isn't a good idea, we're looking to do gold here, I need to rotate across the map and deal with that. Blink, uh, Fearless once again coming out from Yurei, he's looking for Marcel's circle of protection is down, going to get a little bit of a heal, not going to be enough, as Yurei does pick that one up. Gold Fury has been started now by Eternal Rally. Actually, Yura is still fighting here in the back. He's doing quite well. Managed to avoid the portal. He's still up and alive, but has zoned out Yurling completely. Lawbringer coming in now. They're looking to actually fully engage Fearless into the wall. He's low. Gonna have to be careful. At the tower blocked half of that view, but Schultz finds the kill onto Zack now as well. Recall Demon's out there looking for blood onto Yannis. Portal through the wall, though. He's gonna get out safely. Astral Barrage from downtown. Archangel's gonna pick that one up. They could look to dive this tower. At no, they're not, because I said it, and now they're not going to do it. I should know this by now. I should not say what they might do next. Damn it, Zayden. Stop doing these things. 
That said, uh, looking back over the map, MV Terror just gonna take this opportunity to clear up that buff. Not gonna have time to do so as Eternal Rally rotating over, looking to take. No, no. I, I need to stop saying what they're looking to do. They're gonna look to take the mana buff as well as put pressure on the MV Terra and kill these minions and all the stuff that I'm not actually saying. And plus, Spearfall across the wall will connect on the Schultzen. No follow up on the back of that one, however. Looks like Yure Zonk rather is going to be trying to secure his attack sweep buff. Will do so successfully. So we're about 10 minutes, 30 seconds into this game right now, guys. It's two kills to nine in favor of Eternal Rally. Looking at the golden experience, about 7,000 gold, 9,800 experience. I believe we just might have done this a couple minutes ago, so I apologize now that I did it. I recall doing it. But it looks like Jean Kui will have that Warlock Sash online. He's going to be looking to build up those stacks, get a lot more tanky. And it increases overall effective health by quite a bit with the extra protections coming out of his Demon Bag and Recalled Demons. And when you're a god who can essentially press 4, hold W, and kill people, staying alive as long as possible is great. Healing coming out of Suzuki with the Wisps will be nice as well. Yuri once again looking for a Fearless on to Cyphers will not quite find it. Spearball gonna connect, Lawbringer was already used, he's gonna be able to leap out of that one safely. The little Mowerhead pops up. Kinda checking out what's going on. Some nice deep vision wards coming out. Most of the wards coming out of Eternal Rally right now are on the Phalanx team side of the jungle. Looks like they're looking to keep up their aggression they've been displaying so far, as for whatever reason we're looking at the back of a tower yet again. It's one of these curious things as a caster when you're looking over stuff, sometimes you forget to control the camera. Over in that left lane though, we see Arkanjo getting a kill onto Yurling, MV Terra looking for an answer come Suzuki, not going to be able to find it. Arkanjo doing a fight breaking out of a right lane too, coming out Schultz and finding a second kill to that, we're missing the kills everywhere, Zang doing what he can to dodge around Spearfall, going to find Agony in the back, circle protection, not going to be enough, not in a position to help him out. That's going to be three kills for nothing right now, going the way of Eternal Rally. And it well, it's 12 minutes in the game. Fire Giants on is has is has spawned, yes. Has spawned. It's potentially on the table. But Marcel's getting caught in a stun. Fearless actually gonna be cancelled out of by the silence, it looked like. As the camera jumps around, I don't even know anymore what this camera is doing. Maybe a client restart after this match, who knows? On the back of that, again, a decent amount of golden hand or Kanjo sitting at 2200. Tier is at 1300. Decent amounts spread around is everyone but Sylvanas, who still doesn't have much in the way of Golden Hand. He has a Steel Mail on. He's getting a little bit tankier. Almost a Sovereignty. Once that happens, he'll be able to actually properly support and frontline and all that fun stuff you expect of supports. And then that Book of Thoth online for Isis. It could be a bit of a risky pick. Yeah, it's a nice big upfront burst of damage. You don't have to worry about the stacks terribly much. It's only 22 additional magic power from the 100 stacks on it. The mana from it is, of course, very nice. But... The main thing is that big 100 magical power you get just for picking up the item. Marcel's looking for the silence on Suzuki, not gonna quite find it. Standing still, sometimes not what you expect people to do. Nature's Grasp will connect, they could look for killing the Marcel. Stun will come down from Agni. Wing Gust is out. Rainfire gonna connect one or two more hits from anybody, will find the kill. Wrath of Terra's online if they really wanna go for it. There it is! That's already, it's gonna be a secured kill. Suzuki gonna pick that one up. Couple towers, uh, tower shots, not gonna phase him a whole lot. It's gonna be the 13th kill on the board, going the way of Eternal Rally. Suzuki getting one kill up, finding himself a kill as well. Yeah, as a support, that's always a nice thing. Stalker could look for some aggression here in the right lane. He's pretty ahead right now. Level 16, highest level in the game. As Z camera jumps around, I don't even know anywhere. Through space and time, through the wall. Stalker's gonna pick up that kill onto Zaug. Cyphus has to be careful. He's pretty squishy at this point. Yes, Stalker is low, but they could look for it anyway. Yuri has the tower. Through space and time, the portal's still sitting there. Gonna get him out safely for now. But Suzuki's there. Nature's Grasp gonna connect on the back of that route. Yuri gonna pick that one up. Three members on the map right now for Phalanx team. They're all on the right side. Of the, uh, Eternal Rally on the right side. Just gonna look for this outer tower. It's pretty low. That'll free up a Stalker potentially to roam around a little bit more. He has the Sprint 2 online. That's gonna give him slow immunity from the Nemesis. Nemesis is not gonna be slowing him down anymore when he goes to pop that Recall Demons. Left lane, it looks like a bit of a pincer rotation. Yuri coming in, gonna find the Fearless once again. A lot of damage coming out, he's gonna manage to get away. Astro Barrage going up from Rom. Will he find the kill? One shot, one kill! Yeah, well, actually multiple kills, but he's got a couple minions at the back of that too. But nevertheless, he got the Apollo. That's the one he was really looking for with that. Here's what Eternal Rally is gonna look for right now, because I don't wanna actually say what they're gonna look for, because the second I do, they'll do something completely different as we... And the camera jumps to the right side of the map. I, I don't even know what this camera is doing anymore. It's like the, the client is cursed. Left lane, Arcanjo not even caring ever. Link has the camera jumps again. I don't even know, guys. I apologize for the... I, apparently, I just cannot touch the keyboard. 
Okay, we're not gonna use the free camera controls anymore. You're only gonna pop the cats in the left lane. Look at the stay alive. Or it's a Kranjo. Or Scholzen while hitting over as well. Gonna pick that one up with the flame wave. Well, Zaunk gonna just steal some jungle away. Steal some jungle. I did this before too. Zaunk just gonna clear up some jungle camps. Whatever is actually up and available. Gold Fury's up now. Looks like a turn rally. Gonna be going for that. I'm gonna try to touch this keyboard again. See what happens. Like now, I'm moving WASD, moving the camera around in like a little circle here. Nothing is happening. Two minutes ago, the second I touched it, the map, the camera jumped halfway across the map. That said, you're in a spot of trouble. He's been playing super, super aggressive. It's been working out okay so far. I believe he's only died once. Three, one, seven. Not too shabby. Lawbringer not going to connect onto Nemesis. She's pretty slip, slippery without slip judgment. Suki going forward. Blink. Wrath of Terror coming out. Marcel's locked down in the root. Nature's Grass, I believe, is still online. It is. He could look for a grab. Suzuki's low now, taking a lot of tower shots. Recall demons, though, as well. Assistance from Akanjo going to pick up Suzuki, finding a second kill. And Terror though, picks him up with the across the skies. The move's going to get him out of that one. Right now, two for one. Hey, look, a team fight UI in favor of Eternal Rallies. Now they're looking for that mid lane tower. It's down to around two-thirds health of the full wave of minions is approaching right now. So beautiful, going to clear out those archers. Serenade going to stop some damage from Schultz and for the time being. And beat Arcanjo rather looking for and finding that inner tower. Meanwhile, Yore actually proxy farming between the inner tower and the Phoenix in the right lane. A little bit unusual in Smite. You don't see it too much, but when there's a fight going on somewhere else, why not? We don't want to have to go all the way back across the map to defend the tower. Well, we'll just stop the next wave of minions, kind of reset the wave in our favor. So as I take a sip of water, switch over to the Golden XP graph. Eternal Rally has increased their lead to around 14,000, around a 20,000 experience lead as well. 19 kills to 3 of Fouling Steam. Right now, it looks like Fouling Steam really is up against the ropes. They're going to look to stay alive in this one. There's a decent amount of gems online, as I mentioned. As well as, well as this is pretty decent practice overall for the upcoming LAN in December. So you don't want to throw in a towel too early unless it gets way, way too out of control. If this was like 10 minutes ago, I'd say, yeah, we're, there's probably no way we're coming back in this. You were getting stunned out. Right side jungle. F Portal coming in from Cyphers, though. Going to deny that chase. We're about 17 minutes, 30 seconds into this now. Eternal Rally could possibly consider doing a Fire Giant. I have just, of course, just ensured that they will not, because when I call stuff, of course, they do other stuff. But, it looks... I see something kind of interesting coming out somewhere. I'm going to try to remember this. Fire Giant is on a table. It's getting to that point. They find a good couple kills. Gold Fury is down. They don't want to go for towers quite yet. They could look to take a Fire Giant. Give themselves a pretty significant boost. Blink. Fearless going to connect onto Marcel's. He's once again in the middle of a 1v3 here. Lawbringer going to come out as well. Going to not interrupt the D. Wind Gust surprising. Circle Protection is down. Going to look for the heal at the last second. We'll find it. Looking to get away. But one more Fearless from Yari. Going to find that kill. Divine Judgment onto him. But it looks like uh, Eternal Rally not wanting anymore to do this fight. And with Arcanjo now pu pushing down that right lane tower. Your team has destroyed Do I want them to go Fire Giant or Phoenix? They're going to look for the Phoenix and then immediately turn around and go for the Fire Giant. Haha. -ha. Yeah, probably not. It will be a 4v5 siege here, potentially. There's no Fire Giant buff on the table. They have to be careful about the damage they do. They're not going to take this down too quickly. Of course, I say that. Phoenix is already about to drop. Arcanjo actually picking up a kill into Yurling as well. They might not even need the Fire Giant, ladies and gentlemen. They could look for the mid lane Phoenix as well. They don't want to take up too many minion damage. Looks like uh, aggro, tower, Phoenix aggro should be is on Suzuki. He's taking it up in the back line. Middle Phoenix down to about 50% health. This is going to be fairly significant right now. Wing Gust from Ice is not really connecting for much damage. Mid lane Phoenix is about 5, 10% and it will fall. Eternal Rally finding a second Phoenix on the back of a pick and a second pick onto Yearling under that right Phoenix. So going forward, there's going to be fire minions swarming down that right and middle lane. They could look to exploit those, do a fire giant dance for the next couple of minutes. That said, they just went for two phoenixes. Meanwhile, actually, Apollo was still pushing this whole time. He did manage to find two towers, but at the cost of a tower and two phoenixes, I don't know if that's really worth it. Fight breaking out this right side jungle through space and time coming out from Cyphers. Suzuki and Shelton are low, but it looks like they are going to manage to get out of that one safely. No further aggression coming out of Phalanx team right now. They weren't able to find those picks. So... It looked like, uh, the item I spotted out earlier, the Magic Cudgel was on Yuri. He did finish that off into a Ruinforged Hammer. Looking for a little bit of physical protection as well as some extra defensive, uh, defensive power. Some extra physical protection and offensive power in the way of that item. The passive on that is also quite nice. Look at a little bit of extra f uh, physical power out of his Hide of the Urchin. The protections off that will partially be converted to extra physical power. 
So why not? That seems pretty nice overall. Oh, Lawbringer coming out of Europe. We actually spotted that one out. Well, Fearless will connect as well. Sprint pop right after MV Terra. Arcanjo across. The What's this, guys? Astral Barrage, second shot. Gonna find that kill. It could look for more potential. Yuri still being very, very aggressive. Blink! Fearless not gonna connect this time around. As they will disengage, it looks like MV Arcanjo has started up the Fire Giant. They're going for this, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if they're necessarily aware of this in the back. It looks like Yuri Link kinda hanging back. They don't think they're doing it right now. There's two members for Eternal Rally doing this. They're just doing that Fire Giant as a three man. And they will find it. That's going to be Fire Giant Belt on all five members of Eternal Rally. This is kind of really bad right now for Phalanx team. They're having a bit of a rough time overall with that extra increased burst of power right now from the Fire Giant Belt. Going to potentially put them in a bad spot. It's about seven to 8,000 gold overall across the entire team worth of physical power and magical power. Never mind the extra regen and tower killing abilities that it gives you. It looks like they're turning their attention to this left lane. Want to get all these towers and phoenixes down. Get fire minions swarming everywhere. They want to take this game slowly. Not necessarily slowly. It's a bit quicker than the last game. But methodically. Play it safe. Don't get too aggressive. We have the lead. You don't need to go for broke. Throw all your cards on the table. There's always the possibility for comebacks and shenanigans. We've, I've seen them time and time again. Oh, we got the fire giant. We're doing okay. Let's go. Force this phoenix. Force the phoenix, guys. We got this fight. And then two seconds later, there's a DSI again, and you like, and you lost the fight in Phoenix. You got too aggressive. Tier once again in a one v two in the right side fight. Looks like uh, Yana's going to rotate around. Divine Judgment is out on Stalker. The moves coming out from MV Tower. Going to get him out of that one safely. Spirit Ball going to miss the midline. You're right, tanking up that tower and zoning out the entire lineup of Phalanx team right now. Phoenix is low and will fall. That's the third Phoenix right now for Eternal Rally. Fire minions swarming down all lanes here shortly as the camera spazzes out again. Three man port, four man portal. Suzuki getting caught up there right at the end. You know, do some damage, delay this push potentially. potentially. Let's try and switch to free camp. This will cooperate. Spin the camera around and watch what could be the con conclusion of this game right now. Titan is down to around half health. With the dueling going forward, looking to do what he can to delay this. Soccer finds the kill onto Marcel's as the fight going on. Titan is down to about 10% and will fall. Eternal Rally, closing it out quick this time, 22 minutes, 17 seconds in. We'll be moving on to the Grand Finals to face off against We Love Bacon. Fighting off for the shot at 30,000 gems. I don't know if it's per player or the entire team all said and done. But nevertheless, a lot of gems. Phalanx team will go away with third place. Winning a decent chunk of gems for themselves. They did get beyond fourth place. That said and done, we'll put them into the Arena of the Gods land coming up at the beginning of December. So that said, let's take a look at what the items these guys have picked up. See if anything kind of stands out. The Runeforged Hammer on Tier a little bit unusual. As aggressive as he was being, he needed that extra protection. Nemesis can potentially hit him with Divine Judgment, shred off those protections, and head back over the way of... I lost my train of thought. But the way Tier was playing, he needed the extra protections just to stay alive in the fights. The items coming out of, of uh, Phalanx team, though, yeah, the Book of Thoughts give you a nice bit of damage, but the problem was staying alive. Tyr was being so aggressive, finding so many picks that, yeah, the portals were great for getting away. The Circle of Protection helped, the Spirit Ball helped, but they just were not able to stay alive long enough to really do stuff. If we switch over to the damage and display chart, just looking at the damage coming out of these guys, Tyr, I was looking at these backwards for a second, I was kind of shocked. Yannis did a lot of damage, actually second highest in the game, which is great. But again, in the course of a team fight, if you're getting picked off, it doesn't matter how much damage you did. When you die, your damage is gone. It's one less person to absorb damage for the rest of, the, of your team. The damage gets focused on four people rather than five. Other people are going to start dying even more quickly. The other problem was Jean Kui. He was just able to pop that recall of demons, run just through the middle of these fights, cause so much havoc, especially once that sprint two is online, giving him that slow immunity. He was just having this field day going 6-1-13. Arcanja doing great as well, 8-0-7. Schultzen not to be left behind, 4-0-9. And can't, gotta give credit where credit's due as well. Suzuki, 2-1-12 as a support. Getting some kills on the board is always nice. Pretty good kill particip participation as well overall. Whew. Long day today. But uh, yeah, this is the Brazilian... Divindade Supremas roughly translates to Supreme Deities Tournament. The top four teams in this tournament move on to the regional LAN coming up at the beginning of September. 
And one of those teams from that will move on to Worlds. This is just kind of the qualifiers for it. So actually, both of these teams will move on to that land. Just kind of an early upfront look at what some of these teams are doing, how they're playing, and all that stuff. So some good stuff overall. And hey, Reels, good to see some people coming to check this out. I actually can't see the viewer camp right now. How are we actually doing, just out of curiosity? A little better than Saturday. Tried doing this Saturday morning before the EU regionals, and it kind of went poorly, just the timing. They ran late starting it up, and just everyone kind of left for regionals. Obviously, it makes sense. It was a pretty big deal and all that stuff. That said, guys, have been I've been talking and yelling now for going on about an hour and 20 minutes or so. We're going to cut to a bit of a longer break, about five minutes. Let me take a quick break, get a glass of water, set up for the next game. We'll be moving on to Eternal Rally, facing off against We Love Bacon in the Grand Finals, guys. It will be a best of five. It's going to be a long one, hopefully some good games. Stick around, enjoy the music. I'll be back here in just a few minutes. <laughs> 